Greetings, everybody. Thank you for taking the time to join us in this exclusive webinar today. I hope all of you and your loved ones are safe and keeping well. I hope that my voice is audible and clear and my screen is clean and visible. If you're facing any trouble, do let us know right away uh, using the question and answer option uh, on uh, your console. I was looking at the question and answer options and I didn't really see anybody raise an issue. So let me just quickly give it a check once again. All right, yeah, I don't see uh, any issues being reported. So I hope that things are all good to go on the attendee side as well. So uh, my name is Sai Anand. I'm a product marketer for Zoho Sign and I will be the main presenter for this session. I'm also joined by a panel of experts in this session. I have with me Subramanian, our product manager, Saravana from Customer Success, Nagarajan from Mobile Engineering, Sankari and Tarun from Product Engineering, and Chandramali, our marketing manager. We've assembled this panel here to answer all your questions once we get to the Q&A segment of this webinar. Therefore, it goes without saying that if, uh, you, know, if you have any queries, feel free to raise them at any time during the webinar. Uh, use the questions option on your screen to raise them. Some of your questions uh, will be responded to by the panel members as I present for the first 20 minutes or so, but a majority of them uh, will be responded to by our members orally once we begin the Q&A segment. So let's look at what we have on the agenda for today's session. First, I'll talk about why digital signature applications are the right way, uh, especially with remote work being the new normal. And uh, I'll give you an overview of Zoho Sign. And I will give a recap of what Zoho Sign has done in 2020, what additions we've made, what features we've uh, introduced, uh, what new integrations we've introduced, etc. Then I will also give you a short sneak peek of sorts for what we have in, uh, in store for 2021. And once I'm done with that, we can get going with the question and answer session. So let's get started. So uh, what you see on your screen is uh, what we define as doing paperwork the old way. This is essentially having somebody draft paperwork and then print multiple copies of them and make uh, different uh, uh, scanned copies of the uh, document as well uh, when it's being signed by different parties involved in the paperwork or the deal. And uh, if there are two sides to the deal, uh, if it's not just some you know formal paperwork that's being signed by one person and being sent out, then this uh, paperwork would then have to be uh, sent to the other party to obtain their signatures as well. And this is done by using traditional methods like fax or mail. And uh, it takes a long process for the signatures to be collected in these paperwork and uh, for the deal to be formalized once the turnaround occurs. And if it's a deal that involves a transaction or a sale, then there is a lot of billing invoices and follow-up paperwork that needs to be raised as well. And once all of this is done, uh, considering you've been printing out your paperwork all this long, all, all of it has to be printed out, uh, stapled together and, you know, stacked up and securely stored away in some physical space in your uh, office environment. And once that is done, the work doesn't quite end there. Uh, if your company happens to undergo accounting and audits, you would have to retrieve these paperwork to support or substantiate on, uh, you know, your uh, business transactions. So this process, uh, if you notice, is a lot of manual work with little to no digitization or automation for that matter. And this tends to wear out employees and companies. And by that, I mean, this paperwork is something that's uh, extremely repetitive, tiring and cumbersome. And often there's a lot of collaboration between multiple stakeholders and there's people running up and about constantly. And if it's physical paperwork, there's always uh, some element of concern with respect to it being forged or tampered with, uh, especially in a very competitive era, such as uh, the times we're living in right now. And uh, there's always this irrational or somewhat uh, unlikely, irrational fear of losing out on our paperwork in the unlikely event of, say, a natural disaster. And um, all of this put together adds to our stress levels. And on top of that, the paperwork themselves, uh, it, it often has a great amount of time associated with it being turned around uh, when all of the parties uh, that need to sign it have to sign it. And this process is not something that's sustainable over a long period of time because it tends to be a great drain on your resources. Uh, it takes a lot of money to get this going. It takes a lot of space to store the paperwork. And it also takes a lot of labor hours for your employees to sit and sift through paperwork and organize them arrange them and you know make sure everything is in order uh, for you to keep running your business without hassles 
And as I said, it's not a sustainable practice. Therefore, when your business has to expand with your, uh, you know, your growing markets, uh, sometimes it becomes a case of, you know, taking a bite of more than what you can chew. So it becomes very difficult to scale your operations. So how do you tackle this? So this is where, uh, you know, digital signature applications come in. So one of the biggest steps businesses are rapidly taking, particularly after the global pandemic, is to tackle this head on by adopting digital signature applications or solutions. So digital signatures, also known as e-signatures or electronic signatures, are the digital alternative to physical paperwork that is signed with ink and seals. And they've been helping millions of businesses make quick work of collecting signatures in their paperwork as they now look to go paperless and get documents signed in a contactless manner. In digital signatures, a digital fingerprint of the signer is attached to the document that they are signing. And this is very much like their actual fingerprint. It is unique to them and cannot be forged by others. Tampering with a digitally signed document causes irreversible changes to the digital fingerprint and therefore immediately invalidates the document itself. This offers great security and authenticity to digitally signed business documents and can also serve as a measure of non-repudiation where a signer cannot deny signing a document that they have digitally signed. Digitally signed documents are just as legally binding as their physically signed counterparts. Therefore, they too can be enforced in courts, subject to regional regulations and laws in each country. And as I mentioned, the global pandemic has forced businesses into operating remotely and their employees into working from home. Therefore, it's obvious that the situation is not at all conducive to conducting business face to face. And paperwork, which is at the heart of all business operations, is seeing large shifts in the way businesses are approaching it. In fact, some of you might be surprised to know that the digital signature technology has been around for nearly two decades in some form or the other, but only now has it suddenly picked up as something that can majorly disrupt the business landscape with its potential for improving transaction speed and efficiency. So how does it do that? The digital signature solutions that I'm talking about can help you sign and send documents, collect signatures and approval, send documents to agents for in-person signatures, and also track and document, uh, uh, track and audit your document activity, get real-time notifications, recall documents, uh, extend deadlines, send reminders, and manage, the, manage all your documents and download them on demand or back them up to your cloud storage locations. All of these can be done with digital signature solutions from anywhere, anytime, on the go, and on any device. Such is the potential of this technology, and that's how uh, efficient it is for you to get your work done. You can simply be sitting at the comfort of your seat and get all of your business operations where paperwork is involved. Uh, you know, you can set things in motion, get it done, uh, take calls, and make sure you never have to set foot out of out of your house when the situation is uh, you know hostile like it is right now. So let me go over Zoho Sign, Zoho's very own digital signature app, which is already being used by tens of thousands of small and medium-sized businesses across the globe to sign, send, and manage their business paperwork entirely online. So Zoho Sign, as I said in my previous slide, can help you achieve all of that, can help you perform every single function I've outlined in the previous slide, particularly to help with remote work. And it does so by deploying a simple cloud-based electronic signing process. And the, and the functions that are you know, a part of this process are being able to collect signatures and approval. And in that, you would be creating a sign workflow where you can have multiple signers in a particular order. You can have different modes of signing. You can assign different roles for the recipients. You can also send private messages to each signer that is involved and remind them to sign their documents by the deadline. And this is sort of supplemented by advanced features that we have in place, such as being able to collect signatures in person through agents or being able to send documents to a large list of recipients in bulk and uh, make your work a lot easier by creating templates which can be reused for common documents that are being constantly sent out again and again. You can also implement uh, a public uh, form-based signing process through one of our features called sign forms. And all of these features, clear advantage on top of uh, our app being available on literally every platform that businesses use these days is that 
Zoho Sign is entirely built on top of REST APIs, which means our product has the customizability that you can leverage to build integrations with other apps that your businesses use. We already have a list of integrations with popular applications, which I will speak about shortly. This offers you the ability to build custom integrations for your own applications using our APIs and webhooks. So let's uh, talk about some of the highlights of Zoho Sign. Zoho Sign offers uh, custom branding options and supports up to 12 languages. So let me quickly read out the 12 languages that we support. We support English, French, German, Italian, Japanese, Polish, Portuguese, Spanish, Russian, Chinese, Dutch, and Swedish. So these are a wide array of language options that we support right now, and there's more on the way. And along with these, we offer businesses the ability to customize their experience by rebranding the application. You can do this by adding a company logo and uh, you know customizing the email templates that you send out with your own text and brand colors. You can also set your own legal disclosure, which signers would have to agree to before they proceed to electronically sign a document. You can um, add a layer of authenticity to your mails by uh, performing a domain verification of your email ownership, email domain ownership, and sending emails from your organization's email address. You can also customize the signer's signing experience by redirecting them to custom landing pages upon performing different actions. And on top of this, we offer exceptional security. Zoho Sign comes at military grade encryption and uh, document security. So we use the AES-256 standard for encrypting your documents at rest and the TLS and SSL standards for uh, encrypting documents when they are being transported over the web. And the technology itself is based on the public key infrastructure system where the signing keys are stored in FIPS compliant hardware security modules that are housed in our data centers. And to add to this, uh, let's speak about the legal and compliance uh, aspects of Zoho Sign. Zoho Sign as of now is compliant with a plethora of digital signature laws worldwide. Uh, some of the more commonly uh, known ones such as uh, eSign Act and the UETA in the United States, the PIPEDA in Canada, the EIDAS regulations in European Union, along with the GDPR, and the ITA 2000 in India, and the Electronic Transactions Act in Australia. So this compliance with the different regional laws is backed by a set of security features and you know uh, auditing features, such as uh, multi-factor app authentication, which allows you to authenticate yourselves onto the app in different ways, uh, allowing role-based access for the users, uh, ac having reports for the document activity that takes place, being able to generate tamper-proof audit trails for documents, completion certificates, and also being able to authenticate signers using email and SMS OTP and have them upload documents such as ID. On top of that, we also offer some uh, additional features which are becoming more popular these days, such as blockchain-based timestamping, which offers the ability to publicly verify the signing of a document. And in the, like, like I said, in the unlikely event that you're, you know, uh, you have a fear of losing your documents, you can set up cloud backup to keep backing up your data onto a separate cloud storage solution. So all of these features put together help uh, our app become what it is in terms of compliance and security. And arguably, one of the most uh, biggest highlights, uh, I would say, of Zoho Sign is that it comes at a very affordable price point for businesses. Uh, you can visit the link that you see on the screen uh, for our pricing plans. And of course, as I said, it wouldn't, we wouldn't be really uh, you know, uh, talking about using uh, digital signature solutions on the go if Zoho Sign weren't available on nearly every platform that is out there. So in addition to our web application, Zoho Sign is available in the form of native applications for Android, for iOS, for iPadOS, and macOS. So coming to integrations within the Zoho ecosystem, uh, Zoho Sign is one of the most tightly integrated apps uh, with over 15 uh, different integrations available within Zoho uh, within the Zoho environment. Uh, the popular ones, uh, goes without saying, are CRM, uh, Zoho Mail, Zoho People, uh, Zoho Desk, Zoho Books, the uh, Zoho Finance, uh, which includes books, invoice, and inventory, and uh, Zoho Forms and Zoho Writer as well, which uh, have a way of helping you build workflows to get uh, data in and documents sent out really quickly. 
And it also integrates with Deluge that helps you build custom functions to integrate with various different applications within the Zoho environment that support Deluge, uh, you know, in a, in, a, in a runtime environment manner. And there are also uh, workflows that you can build with the customizable applications such as Zoho Creator, Zoho Flow, and Zoho Orchestly. So you can take advantage of Zoho Sign being available as an electronic signing service in almost every uh, popular app within the Zoho ecosystem and make the best out of it. And coming to third-party integrations, Zoho Sign integrates with the major ecosystems that are available right now, such as Office 365 and G Suite. And on top of that, it also has standalone integrations with uh, cloud storage solutions like OneDrive, Google Drive, Box, and Dropbox. And we've recently introduced uh, integrations with tools like Microsoft Teams and also introduced inbox integrations with Outlook and Gmail. And as I said, if we have customizable workflows that we can be building inside the Zoho ecosystem, why not use that to build uh, you know, uh, workflows with other applications as well? So we integrate with uh, platforms like Integromat, Zapier, and Formstack documents that help you connect Zoho Sign to thousands of other web applications out there to build automated workflows. So here's a look at the Zoho Sign web application. Uh, you can visit zoho.com slash sign and explore the app if you are new. And uh, yeah, there's a free 14-day enterprise trial for all new users who visit Zoho Sign's uh, who visit the who sign up for the app and some of you here might have checked out the app or availed the trial before but if you feel like you were not really able to make the most out of your trial or evaluate the app earlier uh, let us know uh, and we would uh, like to you know offer you another trial for you to check out our latest features and additions and see if you want to use zoho sign in the future and uh, so we've done a basic study of uh, how our customers use zoho sign and where it's increasingly replacing pen and paper and we've also taken into the account their feedback on how it's helped them automate paperwork and come up with this list of popular use cases, as you can see on your screen. So there's several notable ones in sales, HR, finance, uh, legal, but also some uh, really uh, unique and niche ones in marketing, support, IT, and even product management. So every other day, we find that there are some uh, new forms of documents that are being signed or sent for signatures using Zoho Sign. And it's really encouraging to see our customers discovering these new use cases to make the best out of the application and shape its journey. So with that, uh, let me quickly take you through what Zoho Sign has added to the application in 2020. So uh, starting off, we've added a couple of new signer fields, the radio button and the company stamp. Uh, the radio button allows you to uh, have multiple options be visible on the, field, uh, on the paperwork while being uh, able to choose just one of the uh, various options that are present. And then there's a stamp field which allows you to add your company or individual stamp onto documents. And there are more enhancements coming to this uh, in the near future as well. And uh, st starting in 2020, we actually revamped the entire account settings interface. We introduced modular tabs which granted users improved control over document uh, you know, defaults, the recipient experience, the security and accessibility aspects of uh, using Zoho Sign. And uh, we also introduced some new features uh, towards the end of last year, which might have not caught your attention, such as, uh, as I said, being able to redirect recipients from documents to custom landing pages, uh, limiting their actions when they're viewing documents, and also uh, adding your business domains onto Zoho Sign to support embedded signing actions through API and sign forms uh, and more features that are about to uh, come in the future. Uh, we also introduced one of our key enterprise features this year, which is automatic cloud backup. Uh, this allows you to set up an automatic backup of all documents that are being signed as and when they're being signed, uh, along with the certificates of completion if you need them to be backed up as well, to a particular location uh, among the popular cloud storage services that we integrate with. So if you have a personal cloud storage, uh, say in Box, Dropbox, Zoho WorkDrive, or um, Google Drive or OneDrive, you can back up your documents as and when they're being signed to these look, uh, you know, to a folder in these storage services uh, using this option. And uh, for uh, people that are more tech savvy, we introduced uh, API enhancements. And uh, this would also apply to those who are not as tech savvy because uh, we introduced something called the quick setup process, which allows you to quickly generate API uh, authorization tokens and uh, generate JSON formats for you to send documents out using API calls 
all from the user interface so that it's uh, not as difficult for you or not as extensive uh, for you to have to go through the entire API documentation to understand the process and do it. Uh, this is meant as uh, uh, this was meant as a way to enable some of the beginners who are interested in you know deploying api based solutions to get started with this uh, of course you can always test these uh, access mechanisms uh, we introduced a new parameter where if you pass the parameter testing equals true in api calls you can send up to 50 test documents a month uh, without actually having to uh, purchase api credits to send documents out so uh, yeah, you can try this out and let us know how it helps out uh, in your uh, use cases. And uh, we introduced one of the most requested features uh, from 2019, which is uh, having a signing experience that is in the recipient vernacular, meaning when a signing uh, workflow is being, uh, uh, is being configured, we can set the language in which the recipient will receive the emails and view the documents interface to, uh, to sign it. So, this allows you to set both the language for the email templates and customize the email template in that particular language. And also uh, it brought in some enhancements like uh, displaying the sign forms and date fields automatically uh, in, the, in the recipient vernacular based on their browser settings and region. So this is something that has helped out a lot of us, uh, especially with uh, the multilingual uh, you know, uh, nature of business across the globe. Uh, we constantly need to make sure that we are uh, hitting every corner uh, in terms of how people communicate and make sure there are no language barriers uh, that are there in making in getting deals done. And uh, this is one of the smaller features that went a little under the radar. Uh, so a lot of people like to call it spouse signing. Uh, basically what it allows you to do is you can send a document to the same email address and specify it as two separate recipients, but with different names. So essentially what it is, is uh, sending a document to say a husband and a wife uh, or a couple uh, with the second person being a supporting signatory without having to send the document to both of them uh, in their separate email inboxes. So this was something a lot of users found really useful. And we very recently introduced validation for user inputs in text fields. So there's a text field that you can add to documents which signers will be required to fill out based on what uh, response you need there. Previously, it used to accept all characters, but now you can set a certain type of validation. You can specify what format it has to follow uh, to prevent invalid entries from going on in those fields. And this not only supports some predetermined formats, but you can also add your own custom uh, format, uh, also known as a user-defined regex, uh, which will help you define the format in which the input has to be. And uh, the email templates, which uh, until about say half a year ago, uh, were allowing limited customization, now allow complete customization. So the signer email templates that go out to all the recipients, uh, signers, approvers, uh, your agents, all of these emails can be completely customized right now. And in addition to being able to change just the color and the font, uh, now you're able to introduce a, ver a variety of formatting uh, changes. And you can even edit the HTML of the template uh, and add images, add your own formatting, uh, add your own design to suit your you know, brand identity. And uh, just one thing to note is that the signing link, which is uh, one of the uh, mandatory parts of the email, uh, cannot be removed, but other parameters can be. So this is entirely down to you, uh, your requirements as to what you want the email to look like and how simple or complex it has to be for your signers. Uh, so some of the other app uh, enhancements that we did inside the Zoho Sign app was to introduce an option for uh, sending the signed documents after completion. So earlier they were sent as a, an email attachment, but uh, we received feedback that, you know, this was not something that was required uh, in all uh, enterprises. And in some regions, this uh, ha this practice had to be restricted because of the local regulations. So we provided the option to send it out either as an attachment or as a link in a document email. And uh, we've also streamlined the signing interface uh, to reduce the number of steps. Earlier, it, it, it required about four or five clicks uh, outside the signing fields uh, to sign a document. But now there's only about three clicks, uh, uh, even two in some cases, uh, to get the document signed. 
so it makes it a lot easier for somebody to sign a document quickly if there if there aren't a lot of fields for a signer uh, to enter the data into and uh, we've also increased the overall capacity of a signature request meaning you can add up to 40 files in a single request right now and uh, the total size used to be 25 megabytes earlier now we've increased that to 40 megabytes to accommodate more extensive documents in you know in a lot of uh, advanced use cases and uh, we in we introduced uh, an updated zoho sign application along with the ios 14 release uh, this enabled uh, the option for adding widgets to your home screen to track and manage your paperwork directly from your home screen and uh, it also it brought sign forms into the zoho sign app mobile ecosystem where you could access and manage your sign forms and you could also share your sign forms uh, on the web, you used to be able to do it as a URL, but in mobile, you can share it, say, via an NFC tag or through a QR code, which anybody that has an iPhone can scan and immediately sign the document without even needing the Zoho Sign app installed on their phone. This is done through the App Clips feature that uh, was introduced with the iOS 14 uh, release earlier this year. And similarly, Zoho Sign simultaneously uh, introduced the iPad uh, OS 14 version as well. This included all of the iOS 14 uh, changes bundled in along with some of the iPad only features such as being able to use the Apple Pencil to scribble on any field that you could type on and the inbuilt OCR technology would automatically convert what you scribbled uh, into uh, text inputs. And of course, yes, uh, as Apple kept having more and more conferences to re release its updates, we were prepared to sort of meet the demand that was accompanied uh, by these conferences. So uh, Zoho Sign also had an application release for Mac OS uh, Big Sur as uh, it dropped about a month or so ago. And in this, we've refreshed our user interface with some new uh, sidebar and menu options. And uh, it also comes in uh, with all the iOS 14 and iPadOS 14 features bundled in uh, for you to use on your MacBook and iMacs. And uh, our Android application also uh, underwent some uh, user interface changes earlier this year. Uh, we've actually completely revamped our user interface with a wide array of menu and accessibility options. And we've just made it look a lot better than it used to. And uh, we've also supported the dark mode because that's kind of very popular right now. And I hope uh, you know these features really help our Android users uh, pick up using Zoho Sign more often than having to rely on the web application as uh, uh, we're starting to focus uh, equally on our web and mobile application development at this point in time, given the nature of uh, you know, businesses being done in this uh, pandemic situation. And uh, coming to some of the integrations that we released, uh, we announced an extension for Zoho Desk. So what this essentially does is it allows you to install the extension from the Zoho Marketplace into Zoho Desk and you can use it to upload documents uh, from a user's uh, device or add documents uh, that are uh, saved as attachments in tickets or to contacts into uh, the Zoho Sign extension and use that to build workflows uh, that can then be used to collect signatures or approvals on the documents. Uh, you can also sign documents yourself, uh, but the core of this operation is that you're able to perform this from inside Zoho Desk without having to navigate to Zoho Sign. So it makes it a lot easier for your agents to get their paperwork done as they're managing their support duties. Uh, for all the integrations, we've listed the help documentation uh, in, the, in the slide itself. You can click on that and visit the help documentation to see how it's implemented and uh, you know uh, uh, have a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to get it implemented. So if you have any further queries, feel free to raise them as questions. And I'm sure my panel is already doing uh, a very good job of uh, uh, catering to your queries and making sure you're all engaged. And uh, very similar to the desk extension, we introduced an add-on for Gmail. Uh, this allows you to pretty much do the same thing. You can add uh, documents which have been sent to your email inbox, either as attachments or documents that you've sent to other people as attachments and you can bring them into Zoho Sign and initiate workflows to collect signatures or sign documents uh, directly from inside Zoho Mail. And this can be done by installing the add-on from the G Suite marketplace onto Gmail. And uh, 
based on a recent survey that we conducted, we found out that this uh, add-on is one of the most popular uh, add-ons among our users, particularly the ones using G Suite and uh, other Google services. And very similarly, we have a, an add-on uh, for Outlook as well. Uh, and although it looks a little different, the functionality is essentially the same. It allows you to add attachments from emails onto Zoho Sign to sign them yourselves or send them out for signatures. And uh, the only limitation of this is that it is not available for personal use. But for business users who use Outlook uh, as a part of their Microsoft Exchange or Office 365 ecosystem, uh, this will be available for you to uh, install either from Microsoft App Source or from inside your Outlook client where you can just click on add-ins and search for the uh, add-in and install it. And uh, we introduced an integration with Integramat. Uh, it is one of those integration platforms as a service uh, applications, which allows you to connect multiple web applications with one another to build automated smart workflows. So you can connect modules of different applications uh, by selecting triggers and actions uh, and setting conditions on what to perform, what action to perform uh, based on which conditions to perform them, uh, etc. So at the moment, Zoho Sign uh, uh, has an extensive uh, module list inside Integromat, which allows you to connect it with over 600 different applications to build uh, scenarios or automated workflows that suit your advanced use cases. But one thing to note is that this uh, will require API credits to send documents for signatures uh, as it's a third party integration. Uh, we also introduced a deeper integration with Box so uh, we have, as I said, a rudimentary integration with uh, uh, the basic cloud storage solutions like Box, Dropbox, Google Drive, and OneDrive. However, uh, we've been receiving repeated requests uh, for users to initiate workflows from directly their cloud storage solutions. Right now, it is possible only with Google Drive. And with this introduction, it is possible with Box as well. So you can initiate sign workflows for documents that are in your box storage directly from the box app without having to navigate to sign and import your documents. And uh, the advantage is that once the documents are signed, they are automatically saved back to box uh, in a location that you specify when you set this integration up. And uh, our Teams integration, that is a Zoho sign for Microsoft Teams, uh, underwent a revamp to its interface. Uh, earlier, it was something that uh, you could install as a tab inside Zoho Teams, uh, inside Microsoft Teams. And uh, the constant hassle of having to switch between a tab and having to reload it and uh, you know, uh, copy paste information and uh, sort of juggle between your activities inside Teams was a little uh, uh, strenuous uh, from our uh, feedback that we received. So we've sort of uh, streamlined the interface to make it a lot simpler, make it more lightweight. And there are lesser options for you to, uh, uh, you know, uh, not go wrong anywhere. And as it is, the, the application no longer feels clunky when you're using it inside Teams. And it, you're able to seamlessly switch between the tabs inside Teams when you're using Zoho Sign. So it just offers a much more uh, simpler experience uh, for you to use it. So yeah, uh, if you're an Office 365 and Microsoft Teams Power user, go for this uh, integration and it, I'm sure it's bound to help you out in great ways. Uh, so coming to some of the enhancements we made within the Zoho integrations that are already available, uh, we we introduced some of uh, the advanced options that are that you presently see in the sign workflows that you initiate with the Zoho CRM integration. Uh, the first one was being able to import documents from cloud storage services, which was earlier not there, and uh, you can also add uh, the record that you are associating that you initiate the workflow from uh, without having to search for it. Uh, by just selecting record from the recipient dropdown. And you can also send documents to other CRM agents. This is something uh, that was introduced recently uh, for a, a vast number of use cases that involve signatories from both your organization and outside. And uh, another advantage, uh, 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 advantageous feature that we released is the ability to pick between the Zoho sign email template that we have inside the sign application or go with a CRM email template that is associated with the module from which you're triggering the workflow. So you can choose between the two. You can customize the template in either Zoho Sign or Zoho CRM and go with what suits your use case the best. 
and uh, we've also introduced uh, some form of a bulk send within Zoho CRM. Uh, you can uh, select multiple contacts inside Zoho CRM and uh, click uh, multiple leads or multiple contacts or multiple records in all of the supported modules and then click send with Zoho sign to sort of initiate a bulk send operation. Uh, this was previously lacking, so we urge you to try it out if you think this will help you out, uh, you know, get your uh, document signed in a faster manner. And a very similar feature is available in Zoho Recruit as well, uh, except in this case, it is where you can generate offer letters in bulk. So you can go to your candidates uh, uh, module and you can select multiple candidates associated with a particular job uh, opening. Uh, you can set up a filter for that and then you can click on actions and generate offer letters in bulk. And uh, this is one way of reducing the repeated process of having to do it over and over again. Some minor enhancements were done to our Zoho people integration as well. We once again introduced an option to import documents from cloud storage services, similar to how we had in the Zoho CRM integration. And uh, the recipient redirection feature, that is when they complete signing a document or when they perform other actions like declining documents or passing on uh, the document signing to a, a later time. When these actions are being performed, you can redirect them to a particular landing page. And this feature, after it was introduced and signed, was ported onto Zoho People as well to use with the Zoho People integration. So you can try that out, uh, try that out to uh, you know suit your use cases. And uh, along with the release of our desk integration, we also introduced the ability to upload files in the Zoho Mail e-widget. So our Zoho uh, Mail integration is a lot similar to what we have with Zoho Desk or even Outlook or Gmail for that matter. Uh, but uh, the ability to upload a document from your own device was previously lacking and we built that in right now. So you can go ahead and try it out. And uh, the Zoho Writer team made several enhancements to the Zoho uh, sign integration uh, over the past year, uh, starting with a very clean user interface, which allows uh, uh, somewhat of an easy field addition process. Uh, earlier, uh, so as you may know, we have this, uh, the text tags or the placeholders, which will be replaced by Zoho sign, uh, signer fields. Uh, earlier, they were visible as such as tags in the Writer integration. Uh, however, they've now been replaced by clean uh, fields which are color coded according to the signers and the recipients, which helps it easier for you to identify what is where. And on top of that, they've made multiple changes to improve the integration, such as uh, being able to define signers, add uh, you know the language settings uh, to have it in their vernacular, and also have email formatting options introduced. In addition, you can also add attachments to the uh, documents that are being sent out from writer. Uh, you can save the, config, uh, the configuration for additional workflows of the same documents being triggered. And uh, similar to our box integration, anything that you send from writer using Zoho Sign, uh, you can configure it to save it back to Zoho Work Drive in a particular uh, document folder. And you may also execute custom functions upon completion. So this is an enhancement that has been introduced. And the recall feature, which was previously there only in the Zoho Sign application, has now been brought into Zoho Writer as well, so that it offers a complete uh, 360 experience directly from Writer for you to not have to navigate to Zoho Sign at all uh, when you're drafting documents and sending them out for signatures. And some uh, minor enhancements were made to Zoho Finance integrations as well. Uh, I would say most uh, requested enhancements that, uh, was introduced, that is having estimates be accepted and signed by customers without needing client portal access. So this is something uh, we discovered that a lot of users are yet to discover, but uh, we have introduced this change. So feel free to go and try it out. You can change this in preferences and that would mean that you know a customer no longer requires client portal access to sign document uh, to sign estimates and if they get a client portal at a future uh, time when they log in they can find all the documents all the estimates that they've signed already loaded onto the portal uh, so that it's easier for them to keep track of them there and uh, in addition to that, uh, the ability to sign credit notes when sending them out to customers have also been introduced to the Zoho Finance integrations. Uh, all of these integrations are available uh, in the finance apps such as books, invoice, and inventory. So feel free to check them out and see how that helps you. And uh, as we come to the end, uh, uh, one of arguably one of the biggest changes that we introduced this year is the automation credits. Uh, this offers the ability uh, for enterprise customers to explore, build automated custom workflows across the Zoho ecosystem using Zoho Sign 
without having to purchase API credits. So the idea is that you will be able to build and test your workflows and start using them for your enterprise needs without needing to spend more. And uh, this offers a way uh, in which it reduces your costs and uh, also uh, has a mechanism in place for you to automate tasks as and when required. Uh, if you need more information on what scenarios this applies to, as there is a list of conditions that it uh, has, so you can visit the uh, link that I've put out on the uh, uh, the slide here. You can click on it and see where it applies and where it doesn't. Uh, unfortunately, it does not apply to third-party applications as of yet. Uh, hopefully, uh, more and more users start exploring the integrations across the whole ecosystem and uh, start using this to their uh, best potential. And with that, uh, I believe I've briefly covered all the updates we've made in 2020. So let me quickly talk about what's there in 2021. Uh, so there, there aren't going to be any uh, fancy images that I'm going to throw here. I'm just going to talk what's coming and uh, I hope to stir a conversation and get some feedback from you on uh, what we should probably focus on in our roadmap to try and get, uh, get the help you need to get your business uh, you know, up to speed on uh, the way the world is headed once it's uh, past the pandemic. So uh, one of the first features we're about to introduce is the ability to print documents you're sent using ZooSign, physically sign them, scan them, and upload them. Yes, I know it sort of technically goes back to the argument or get, uh, I was making against physical paperwork. But uh, unfortunately, in some regions, there are conventions that dictate that certain types of documents need to be printed and signed. So uh, for supporting such use cases, we are introducing an ability where you can download your document, print it, and then uh, scan a signed uh, copy and upload it back onto Zoho Sign and send it back. Uh, this is being uh, worked on and will be introduced soon. And uh, we will also introduce custom domain and white labeling uh, for your own custom domains uh, in the future. This is something that we already have in beta. So customers who would like to access this can write to us and uh, we will give you access and you can uh, try and use it uh, and see how it works out for you. And uh, we're also in the process of revamping the user roles, introducing user groups and streamlining the, streamlining the permissions that are available inside the applications. And uh, this would help uh, companies keep better track of uh, how their users use Zoho Sign and also audit user tasks. And uh, there's a feature on its way that will help you completely back up your entire Zoho Sign data onto a cloud storage location on demand. And in addition to that, you can also, uh, inter uh, we are also introducing a new signer field, which allows signers to upload an image. It can be of anything. And we're also working on an integration with Microsoft Power Automate and SharePoint. And uh, we're looking to introduce bot support for Zoho Sign in Microsoft Teams. Now, uh, this isn't a, an exhaustive list by any means. Uh, we are actually in the process of supporting multiple integrations along with these. Uh, so you will get to know them as and when we introduce them. And we're also working on multiple additional languages, as I was mentioning earlier. And uh, coming from uh, a legal perspective or rather a security perspective, uh, we are working on introducing qualified electronic signatures. It is actually very close to being introduced for some regions. Uh, this is being achieved by uh, introducing features that uh, facilitate USB token authorization and PFX authentication. And we're also on the verge of providing cloud-based signature or identity uh, via regional certificate authorities in the sense that you can use your certificate provided by a regional CA to sign documents on Zoho Sign. So this is uh, uh, being currently being worked on and we're look very close to releasing it for India and uh, Europe. Uh, hopefully we will have the mechanisms in place to have it introduced for other regions as well. And we're also looking towards document uh, trusted time stamping, which is uh, time stamping that is provided for signed documents from providers that are authorized by local governments and regional authorities. So this is also on its way and uh, very soon we'll be introducing it uh, in a phased manner for different regions. And uh, this obviously culminates in us heading towards knowledge-based authentication where we will authenticate signers in real time, uh, verify their ident ident identity and have them sign documents, which would have a more robust authentication uh, process in place uh, to help documents uh, clearly stamp uh, who the signer is uh, 
and help with different industrial and legal use cases. And we are building vertical solutions across different domains uh, by issuing SDKs. And uh, this will be uh, uh, available soon where uh, we are also encouraging some of our partners to work with us to help implement this uh, for various customers who might not be as tech savvy, but need a very specific solution to go with their day-to-day uh, -day business use cases. Uh, you can always keep tab on what's coming with Zoho Sign uh, in our release notes page. You can visit it from the URL that you see on the slide. Okay, so in the long run, uh, this is something we we hope to achieve by 2021, but might take a little longer. What we are hoping for is uh, improved compliance. As it is, Zoho Sign is perfectly valid for several legal use cases. Uh, however, there are certain government authorized uh, use cases and certain specific use cases based on different regional laws, uh, which limit its applicability, uh, uh, such as 21 CFR Part 11, uh, etc. So we're hoping that, you know, by introducing the features that we have mentioned, uh, Zoho Sign will, uh, will slowly fall in line with uh, the compliance required uh, for uh, us to be a part of these groups as well. So we're, in addition to 21 CFR part 11, we're looking to expand our uh, features to uh, have more FinTech applicability, such as being able to perform uh, KYCs uh, through signature and identity pro uh, and through the process of providing cloud identity. And uh, we also are working on uh, uh, having an AI-based uh, automatic field detection and smart uh, form filling service. Uh, this is something uh, that's being worked on inside Zoho and uh, uh, we will soon uh, be looking to in integrate it with Zoho Sign to try and uh, have it help our signers uh, be more smart in the way they sign documents. And uh, obviously, uh, uh, if with knowledge-based uh, knowledge authentication coming, uh, we would at one point uh, be required to have uh, the option to record the screen actions and the signer at the time of signing to establish that it was indeed them that signed the documents uh, uh, for various use cases. So that is also in the works and hopefully we ha hope to have it uh, uh, as a part of our improved, uh, improved compliance roadmap. So yeah, with that, uh, I guess I've come to the end of the presentation that I have. Uh, so we hope all of these updates will help more and more business go digital and your feedback plays a major role in uh, where we stand uh, and where we get to in 2021. So I hope all of you are as active and vocal uh, in helping us get there. Uh, so I've put together some resources uh, for you to take a look at uh, to help you get going with the app. Uh, there's a help, uh, there's the help repository. Uh, there's a separate getting started guide for newcomers to get uh, started with sign. Uh, you have uh, the integrations help documents, which help you get started with integrations. There's also a niche solutions guide, which help you build on particular solutions that we've repeatedly received queries in support, asking us for assistance. Uh, for those who are uh, coding or API enthusiasts, you can get started with our API guide. Uh, for those who like more of a hands-on approach in the sense that they would like a tutorial or a walkthrough on how each and every feature works, how every integration works, you can visit our video playlist and access our previous webinar uh, recordings as well. Uh, you can also come and engage us in our forums. We have uh, a lot of developers and users constantly active, uh, asking us questions and engaging with one another. So you can do that. Uh, for other queries like, you know, what's our pricing, what, uh, how Zoho Sign is applicable in your region, you can visit the other links that I've uh, put up on the slide. You can also always request a personalized demo by visiting the last link and our uh, support engineers will be happy to help you out with that as well. All right, so uh, with that, uh, we'll get started with the Q&A segment. I believe I have spoken for quite a long time. Uh, so feel free to shoot your questions. I see enough questions already, uh, uh, sort of an onslaught of questions waiting for us to answer uh, on the Q&A tab. So we'll take a look at them. Uh, if your question is not orally answered, you can still rest assured that one of our panelists will type out a response and send it to you. So uh, yeah, so just give us a moment to quickly uh, take a look at the questions and start answering them uh, in a short while. Okay, so uh, as I l glance over to the questions tab, I notice that we have a lot of questions and nearly all of them have been answered by the panelists uh, in, 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 as a written response. So I will be projecting the questions still and reading out the response uh, or have them read out the response so that it's easier for you to understand what they meant. So you can also shoot follow-up questions for them to answer uh, in that particular scenario to help you get going. 
All right, so I'm going to uh, project this question uh, from Scott. Uh, so Scott has asked us uh, that uh, if there are any plans to uh, download documents uh, before getting to an area uh, it, that does not have any internet coverage. So uh, Subhu, do you want to answer this question? Read out the question and answer it. Uh, yes, uh, Sai. So hello, Scott and everyone. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I mean, we are uh, planning to support uh, offline uh, signing okay so especially targeted towards uh, mobile devices like uh, um, phones and tablets and uh, we are working on it already and should be available like uh, very soon all right so uh, not, uh we have we have a question from uh, lally so, um, it's a question about having the document ids on documents so i'm going to project that question now uh, so subu do you want to answer this question as well uh, sure sir uh, I mean, the reason why we have the document identification code on the uh, top of the document is that like uh, it acts as a connection between the uh, original document and the certificate of signature. Okay, so uh, for that purpose only, like uh, uh, by default, we are enabling this for every account, but you still have an option to turn it off uh, through our settings, settings, uh, account settings, where you will have an option to uh, disable. Uh, embedding of uh, the document identifier onto the document okay so uh, that is how you can control it okay thank you subu all right so yeah here's a good question um i'm going to uh, project this question from didier um so the question says uh, the valid is when a document has been signed by zoho sign the validation of the certification is mentioned as unknown and it is uh, impossible to identify the author uh, and that uh, the cert signatures have a problem. All right. Uh, I'll first let uh, Shankari answer uh, this. Uh, Shankari, do you want to take uh, answer this? All right. I believe uh, our uh, panel member who answered this question earlier was is is having issues with connectivity. Shankari, are you there? All right. I think uh, uh, maybe I'll I'll take it up. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. No issues. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if okay. So if the uh, Acrobat reader says like uh, there is issues with respect to uh, identifying the validity of the signature. Like uh, one possible reason is that uh, certificate may not be uh, probably recognized by the, uh, I mean the document reader. If we actually connect to the internet and uh, uh, I mean validate the signature, it should get validated properly. Since all the certificates uh, that we use are all part of the Adobe approved trust list. So we don't see any reason why like uh, the the certification it's, it's still shown as the unknown. So it might be an issue with the uh, uh, population of uh, the certificate routes onto the document reader. In any case, uh, if uh, the snapshot is shared with us, uh, uh, we can always like uh, uh, check and uh, uh, update through email. Uh, uh, yeah. Customers can write to us to a support email address, support at zohosign.com, so that uh, we can al analyze in detail and respond to you. Thank you, Subhu. Yeah, uh, to add to that, uh, we do have uh, a, a separate uh, uh, FAQ question uh, to answer this very particular question. Uh, if you look at our FAQs page, uh, the problem with this is that a lot of people don't connect their Acrobat uh, with the Adobe Cloud as often and download the trusted certificates. This results in certificates being marked as an un, uh, unknown validity. Um, and uh, to add to what Subhu said, Zoho Sign is also part of the uh, European Union trusted list as well uh, at this point. So we have we are part of two separate uh, trusted lists uh, maintained by separate authorities. So uh, there should be no issue of uh, certification being mentioned as unknown or as uh, being uh, unverified. So uh, connect to the internet, uh, see your trusted list settings, and hopefully that should fix the issue. Uh, if you still face an issue, as uh, Subhu said, you can always uh, mail us and we will try and help you out uh, with uh, whatever you're facing. All right, so uh, here's a, a quick question from Viraj. Uh, I'm going to be projecting the question. So the question is how to update a deal or a code status to closed or one uh, once a document is signed in Zoho Sign. I guess this has something to do with custom functions. Uh, Saravna, do you want to answer this question? Uh, hi, Sai. Uh, hi, Viraj. 
Yes, uh, this particular uh, thing can be achieved using, uh, I mean, you can write a, a custom function in CRM and uh, you can actually achieve this. Great. Yeah, uh, as Sarvna said, you can uh, have a custom function implemented and uh, if you need assistance with this, you can write to support and we'll uh, pass you on to the CRM automation team, which will help you implement this as well. All right, so uh, I, I believe most of the questions uh, that have been raised have been answered uh, in the written form. Uh, but let me quickly see if there are any questions that have been raised that have not been answered and uh, I'll answer them orally. All right, uh, so there's a question from Matt uh, asking us if, there's a, if there will be better team collaboration for template signed documents. Uh, these are typically followed up by a team and are user specific. Okay, uh, so essentially, if I understand your question correctly, uh, it has to be something uh, about collaboration between users in Zoho Sign uh, across templates without just the administrators having access. So Matt, I believe this is something we, we will be addressing with our revamp to the user roles and user groups that we will be introducing soon. Uh, with that, uh, you will be allowed to create separate user groups and define what permissions are granted to each uh, a user in your organization. So this way you can build a, a, a team that uh, has access to templates without needing to be administrators. Uh, yeah, hopefully once it is out, you can test it out for us and tell us if you know the, it suited your uh, use case and uh, that will help us keep improving it uh, going forward. Uh, a question from uh, Iris uh, asks us if there will be an option for a signer to make a comment without there being a field for it. Uh, yes, this is something we are looking to address as well. Uh, essentially, when a document is being sent out, right now the only mechanism where a signer can drop a comment is, uh, decline, is by declining the document and dropping a comment in the decline box. But we are looking to sort of uh, sh uh, shift up this procedure uh, in a manner where you are allowed to make comments to a document before proceeding to sign it and the site and the owner will receive these comments and will be able to respond to them uh, sort of enabling real time interactions within the document space uh, without affecting the document signing process as such uh, this is something we are exploring right now uh, uh, soon there should be something that uh, uh, we support to have this be possible uh, so there's another question by Tracy, which I believe is, is similar to the question that I we just received from Iris. That is, when a client wants a small change in a contract, uh, it's not as easy to make the change and resend the contract back to them. Uh, so yes, as uh, as we were mentioning, uh, we are looking to enable enabling uh, editing the document uh, workflow on the go, and this will include editing the document as well. So as of now, uh, we have a writer integration which leverages the ability to uh, to edit a document while it is in the process of being sent out for sig for signature. But soon we're looking to sort of have that implemented in Zoho Sign as well to have. Uh, owners edit documents on the fly uh, based on interactions with the signers uh, without needing to recall or decline or you know uh, restart the procedure altogether. Uh, yeah, uh, this is something that we're working on and once uh, we have something in place, uh, we will be making an announcement. All right, uh, I believe this is more of a feedback than a question uh, from Scott uh, where he said a few people aren't uh, finishing the document signing process because they don't click the final finish button. And if is there is is there a way to make it more clear that it has to be pushed? Uh, uh, good catch, Scott. Uh, I understand where you might be coming from because uh, in documents which will have uh, multiple pages, probably run to about 20, 30 pages, uh, it's easy for a signer to lose track of the signing progress and as a result, uh, forget uh, to uh, click the finish button. Uh, we are uh, introducing more enhancements to the signing experience uh, part of uh, the application. Uh, we will soon have the signer prompts be more clear and visible uh, so that the signers can uh, very clearly move on from one field to another and navigate the document in a particular flow. And uh, it, it eventually uh, helps them uh, complete the process uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a manner where uh, all actions are captured in a sequence. So uh, it's easier for them to not get lost in the uh, in the middle of it all. So 
yeah i think it should uh, uh, be available soon uh, because these are just uh, user interface enhancements they're not really particular features but uh, i get where you come from and uh, your feedback has been well and duly noted all right uh, christine has uh, given us a point of feedback this is something that uh, we are working on as well uh, an idea for our pipeline uh, to enable a more flexible solution for generating templates where instead of fixed pdfs uh, it would be great if their uh, the parts of the pdf were dependent on the user input and uh, paragraphs are included in the template uh, and the PDF gets generated on the fly. Uh, Christian, this is something we are working on with some of our internal integrations within Zoho as well, uh, wherein you can generate documents uh, with uh, multiple clauses, which can be included and uh, uh, removed on the fly uh, and have the uh, signers agree to it. So I guess, uh, this is something in the works. Soon we will be having uh, a, a feature that enables, like I said, both intera live interactions between signers and uh, uh, owners and uh, also have uh, sections of the document be included or excluded from uh, the negotiation that is uh, ongoing. Thank you so much uh, for this uh, feedback. We are working on it when uh, soon we will have something for you to uh, work with. All right, uh, I guess we are... Uh, past the time that we had allocated for this session and we received a lot of questions and we've answered most of them as well. Uh, uh, most of them were answered orally and uh, uh, I think all of them have been answered uh, through the uh, response uh, mechanism where our uh, panelists uh, typed out their responses and answered the questions. So thank you for uh, you know sending in your questions. Uh, I think we look to wrap this session up. If anybody has any detailed questions or elaborate uh, uh, requirements for assistance, uh, feel free to write to us and uh, we will look to get uh, uh, our support engineers to get, uh, get in touch with you and help you out uh, uh, in a personalized manner that helps you out uh, to solve your needs. So I guess I'll move on in that case and uh, end this presentation. Um, so at Zoho Sign, uh, we actually like to keep things uh, very uh, close with our customers. We treat our customers like family. So you can feel free to reach us at any time. You can mail your queries. Uh, you can uh, mail your requirements, feedback, uh, or you can even hit us up on social media. Uh, you can uh, write to support at Zoho Sign for uh, any form of assistance that you need. Or you can uh, uh, send us a direct message uh, at Zoho Sign on Twitter, where we recently just hit the milestone of 1,000 followers. Uh, we actually regularly post updates of our activities and releases on Twitter, so do follow us there. And uh, it goes without saying, but uh, your engagements are important to us, and we use them to maintain a strong, healthy working relationship with our user base. Uh, so great. Yeah, I had a wonderful time presenting this session. I'm sure uh, all of us here on the panel uh, had a good time in, uh, responding to your questions as well. Uh, I want to thank all of you for attending and engaging us with your questions. Uh, I hope it was a quite uh, productive session that was helpful to everybody that participated. Uh, your feedback, as I said, uh, are, uh, was uh, very well noted and your interactions are duly appreciated. Uh, with that, uh, I think we'll all be taking our leave. Uh, so this is Sai Anand and the rest of the Zoho Sign crew signing off. Have a great day and happy holidays.